to the shop. Today on the show I'm going to be finishing up the doors for the entertainment center by making the raised panel, putting the door together, making the rabbit for the back, and doing the molding around the four exterior edges. So let's get started by making the raised panel. So I start with a six quarter walnut board that I'm resawing to book match to make the panel. In order to resaw the board, I saw towards the center from all four corners, flipping the board occasionally so I can control the cut and keep things on line. To finish the cut, I stand the board upright in the vise and saw out any remaining material at the center that I didn't get by sawing in from the corners. So for those of you who may not be familiar with the term book match, let's take a second and see exactly what a book match is. So here's the board that I just got finished resawing. And this is the board that I'm going to turn into um, the raised panel for the door. And I'm going to book match the grain on this because I think that's um, what's going to look best. Um, and as its name implies, the book match comes from opening that board up like a book. So I resawed that thick board into two and I'm going to open it by flipping one piece over and aligning it next to the other. Now you can see here um, the cut is still plenty rough but you can kind of get an idea of what's going to happen here. So the grain is actually on either side of the glue joint is actually going to be a mirror image. So this the, the, the grain on this side of the glue joint will be the mirror image of the grain on this side of the glue joint. And that comes from opening the piece up like a book as opposed to sliding it off like this, which would be called a slip match. And in, those, in that case, you would get grain that's sort of um, the same, so you would get a pattern. But for this piece, we're going to go with the book match with that mirror image on either side. And when you're considering um, what type of board to use for a raised panel, um, my preference is always to use a single wide board if I can find one. If I can't find one single board that's wide enough that I can get the entire panel out of that one board, then my next preference is to use a thick board like the one I have here and resaw it and book match it. To me, that just looks the best. Um, I would rather not glue up non-matching boards um, to make a panel, and I would really rather not glue up any more than two boards to make a wide raised panel. Um, any more than two boards and you really start to, to get commercial looking and, and kind of cheap looking. Um, so to me, um, single wide board if I can get it. If not, start with a thick board, resaw it, book match it and I think that really makes for the best looking raised panel. So I got pretty lucky and these boards stayed pretty flat after the resaw. Sometimes um, sometimes you're not so lucky and uh, you'll get some cupping. These cupped a little bit. This one cupped a little bit. You can see here. Um, and this other one cupped in the, in the opposite direction. So. Um, I'm going to have to plane these surfaces. Now these were planed um, before doing the, the resawing. I'm going to have to replane these just to get that little bit of cupping out before I gauge for the final thickness. Um, and we'll talk about um, how to come up with that final thickness um, before we do that planing. So to determine the thickness of the panel, you have to consider how you want the panel to sit in the frame. Now in this case, when the panel is done, I want the front of the raised panel to be 
even with the front of the rails and styles. Um, if you want your panel to sit proud of the rails and styles, then that's something you have to take into consideration when you determine how thick your panel is going to be. Alternatively, if you want your panel to sit below the surface of your rails and styles, again, something you have to take into consideration um, when you're determining your panel thickness. Um, I want my panel to sit flush with the rails and styles in the finished door. So in order to get my panel thickness, I take my, uh, the depth of my groove because I want the inside of the panel to be a flat panel. It's not going to be raised on the inside. So I'll take the depth of my groove, which is a quarter of an inch, add to that the thickness of the molding profile, which is another quarter of an inch. So that gives me a half of an inch plus that fillet, um, on the outside here. So quarter inch for the groove, quarter inch for the round over molding profile, um, which gives me a half plus another sixteenth of an inch here for um, that fillet that sits on the outside. So that's going to mean I need a panel of nine sixteenths of an inch thick. So I want to make sure I get the cupping out of the two resawn boards before I glue them up into a wider panel. So I just used my triplane to plane out the cupping in the face of the two boards that was already planed. And then I'll take my triplane, clamp those two flat faces together and match plane the edges so that I can get a, a good glue joint. And I want to make sure that that edges are straight so I don't get any gaps. And once I'm sure that the edges are straight, uh, I'll go ahead and glue up the panel. To get the size of the raised panel before I plane it down, because it would make a whole lot of sense for me to plane this whole glued up thing if I don't have to, make, you know, may as well make my job easier. I uh, arrange the frame on the glued up panel where I, where I want it, where I think the grain pattern looks best. And then I'm just going to trace inside, give myself the outline for panel. And I can move the panel and extend my line by a quarter of an inch on all four sides for the portion of the panel that's going to fit inside the groove of the frame. So here is the line that was traced from the frame and then here's the quarter inch offset. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll rip just wide of the rip and cross cut just wide of these quarter inch lines clean up the panel to those lines and plane it to thickness. You notice here that I don't use anything more than my 47 and a half degree English smooth plane for planing the end grain of this board. And it works just fine. You can see the end grain shavings coming out. Uh, you really don't need a low angle plane for this. To transfer the final size of the panel, um, I'm going to actually set it into the rabbit. Okay, so we made that rabbit here where we started the molding. So the groove um, in the sides, in, in the rails and styles, is the same depth as this rabbit. So really that's about how um, 
the final dimension of the panel is going to be the same as what this rabbit is. That'll leave us enough panel to go into the groove um, as well as some room to play and, uh, and clean things up a little bit. So I can set that in there and I'm going to set my square end at the top and my square straight side in the rabbet on this side. And now I can just go ahead and transfer those marks where they need to be. Get an idea from here what that final panel size needs to be. Now once I have the, the final panel size marked, I can transfer it square across this side. And that'll give me my final length. Now for the width, for transferring the final width, you have two choices. You can use a square and line it up with your mark and transfer off um, the square end because you know you've already squared this end up to the side. Um, so by registering the square against the end, it'll make this side parallel. The other thing you could use is a panel gauge, which is a very large marking gauge. Um, unfortunately, my gauge needs a little bit of repair so I'm going to be using the square method. So I'll line the square up and I'll transfer my mark that way. And when you size this panel, it's important to try and get it um, as accurately as you can before you play in the bevels. Um, in this case, a little bit loose, a hair loose, is actually um, better than too tight. Um, this, is, this is about perfect for me. I've got about maybe a 32nd of an inch, if that, of play inside that rabbit for the panel to slide around. Um, and the reason that I want it to be a little bit loose rather than too tight is once I plane those bevels, um, if it's too tight, and, or, or too wide or too tall and I need to take material off the top or the sides, that's going to um, make the bevel on the whatever side I plane narrower. Um, as long as you plane a little bit off both sides, you can, you can get away with it. Um, but I would rather uh, make the panel just a hair loose to begin with. That way I know I shouldn't have to worry about making the panel any narrower or shorter. So this should fit in the, in the uh, frame just fine um, and I'm ready to go ahead and uh, plane some bevels on this panel. Now planing the bevels starts with layout. So this is going to be a fielded and beveled, uh, fielded and raised panel, which means that we're not just going to have bevels on the sides, we're going to have about a sixteenth of an inch field in the center as well. So I want to start by laying out that field because I'm going to plane it first. So to do that, I'm going to set a marking gauge to the desired width and I'm just going to go ahead and scribe in the extent of the field. Now I've reset the gauge for a sixteenth of an inch and I want to scribe the depth of the field on all four edges of the board. To plane the bevels, I can use any variety of tools. Um, an unfenced, plain old rabbit plane would work just fine. You can clamp a fence, clamp a straight piece of wood to the top of the panel and just plane with this plane running right up against uh, that piece of wood. Um, with a plane like that, you're just going to want to make sure you uh, knife the cross grain scribes um, every couple of passes just to deepen that scribe and make sure you don't tear out the shoulder. Um, I prefer to use a fenced rabbit plane when I do 
raised panels. I just think it's faster. Um, I don't have to worry about clamping a fence down. Um, I've done it both ways. Um, but now that I have a, a, my rabbit plane really tuned up well, um, I think this does uh, a faster, easier job uh, of creating um, the rabbits and the bevels um, just with this plane. So this is the one I'm gonna be using. But if you don't have a fenced rabbit plane like this, um, you know, feel free. Any unfenced rabbit plane will work just fine as well. So I start to define the field by planing the cross grain rabbits. And I'm just using my fenced rabbit plane and I'm watching my scribe line to make sure I don't go too deep. So I'm just going down to a sixteenth of an inch deep for the field. And after I have both cross grain rabbits planed, I go ahead and plane the long grain rabbits. Now in this particular panel, I'm having to plane against the grain here. So I am getting a little bit of tear out on these long grain rabbits. Um, but that's something that I'll go back and address when I plane the bevels later. Right now I'm just interested in getting the field down to a sixteenth of an inch deep. Okay, now that I have the four rabbits planed, um, I want to go ahead and scribe my depth for the bevels. And I'm going to do this from the bottom side because I want the bottom to be consistent. And I set this gauge to just under a quarter of an inch, maybe a 32nd under a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to use this line to guide my, my planing, I want to plane the bevel from here down to that line. I don't want to make it any deeper, however, at the field. To do the bevels, I move the fence just a hair wider and it progresses just like the rabbits. I start with the cross crane bevels just like I started with the cross grain rabbits. I hold the plane at an angle and I adjust it by eye as I progress so that I get a good bevel that will meet my two scribe lines. After doing the cross grain bevels, I go ahead and turn the panel and do the long grain bevels. Um, and again, I'm still getting a little bit of tear out here. I decreased the depth of cut a little bit, but I can fix that by scraping a little bit later. So I'll leave myself enough extra meat to scrape. Now, <clears throat> as I start to approach my final depth near the corner, I want to pay, I'm, I'm paying particular attention to this line here. So you can see as I plane this down, that line, gets closer and closer to the corner. What I'm focusing on is when this is done, I want that line where the two bevels meet to go from corner to corner. I can adjust the center of the panel later if necessary, the center of the bevel up farther. But as I get closer here, I want to really focus on that because if those two bevels don't meet in a nice 45 that goes from corner to corner, that's very noticeable. So I adjust, as I said before, just sort of adjust by eye, leaning the plane, putting a little bit more pressure where you think it needs to go to make that cut. And you just want to get that last cut so it leaves you a nice straight line from corner to corner there. Now I won't touch this corner anymore. If I need to make any other adjustments farther up, I'll go ahead and do that. Now it's important as you're planing to check as you go along to see how your panel is going to fit in the grooves in your rails and styles. And you can make a test block for this, um, but I typically just use the rails and styles themselves just to, to see how it's going to fit. This one uh, is looking pretty good, so I think we're going to do a dry fit of this and uh, clean up the tear out on the bevels a little bit with a card scraper 
And then we're going to go ahead and glue this one up. So I'll scrape the bevels to remove the tear out. And this works great except for really deep tear out. So set your rabbit plane fine enough so that you don't get really deep tear out when you're planing the bevels. And remember, sandpaper is a hand tool too. There's nothing wrong with taking a little 220 and a cork sanding block and hitting the bevels before assembling the door. In fact, now's the time to do it because it's much harder to sand these bevels after the door is assembled. So once the door is assembled and the glue is dried, you can go ahead and saw off the horns that we left to protect the ends of the mortise. And after sawing off the horns, we can clean it up with joiner plane or smooth plane and just flush up the ends of those styles with the ends of the rails. This is also the time to go ahead and level up the rails and styles if they didn't glue up perfectly level. And you want to try and make sure before assembly that your rails and styles fit as flush as possible because if you have to plane too much you'll plane into your molding. Um, but if they're proud just by a little hair, now's the time to take your smooth plane and go ahead and clean up those joints. To lay out the molding on the outside edge of the door, I start by scribing a line a quarter inch in from the edge on all four exterior sides. Um, and this is to define the fillet of the molding. Then I'm going to flip the door and this time I'm going to scribe these lines about 5 sixteenths of an inch wide and this is for the rabbit that's going to create the lip of the door. And this is a little bit wider um, so that I don't have to do a lot of adjustment later to the fit of the door on the opening. Now remember the hinge side of this door does not get a rabbit. Then I can go ahead and plain and scribe the sixteenth of an inch depth for the rabbit that's going to define the fillet. Again, this is on all four edges from the front face. And then I'm also going to scribe in a quarter inch beyond that, so a total of five sixteenths of an inch for the rabbit. And remember, the rabbit does not get planed on the hinge side. And just like before, we start with the cross grain rabbits. I think you're starting to see a theme here. Um, and these are planed again down to a sixteenth of an inch to define that fillet for the molding. And if these aren't perfect, you can take a small shoulder plane or unfenced rabbit plane and go ahead and uh, run it on its side and just clean up that rabbit till you get to your scribe line. You want this to be a good, clean, uh, crisp line, good, cr clean, crisp rabbit, uh, because this is going to be the molding on the show face of your door. So you want to get this one right. And again, after planing the cross green rabbits, go ahead and plane the long green rabbits. And again, I'm just using my fenced rabbit plane here. Now this one does get planed on all four faces because this is for the molding. When we flip to the back side, again, this rabbit's a little bit wider. Um, this rabbit's also much deeper, so you can see I've taken the depth stop off my rabbit plane here so I can get deep enough. But remember, um, this rabbit only gets planed on three edges. We don't plane the rabbit on the hinge side. Again, start with the cross grain and then finish up with the long grain. And back to the molding on the front side of the door. This is started just with the unfenced rabbit plane, just by creating a chamfer. And this is going to help to guide the molding plane. But in fact, you can really make this whole molding just with the rabbit plane by changing the angle um, that you hold the plane at and gently rounding it over as you go. But I switch over here to a quarter inch hollow plane um, and this makes the molding uh, quite nice. And 
And the benefit of using the hollow plane is that you can actually turn the plane around and come in from the other direction. So if you're getting some tear out or you want to make sure you don't blow out that cross grain, uh, you can turn the plane around and come in from the other direction and, uh, and plane it up that way. And we finish up with the long grain again. Start with the rabbit plane, the unfenced rabbit plane, to create that bevel or chamfer. Um, and then switch over to the hollow plane, or stay with the rabbit plane if that's all you have, and uh, round that profile over. Now here, just like with the raised panel, you want to be careful at the corner. You want that corner to meet in a nice 45 degree angle because it's going to be very visible in the final piece. So focus on that corner, pay a lot of attention to that, and get that corner right. What's between the corners isn't as important, but get the corners right and everything else will look right. So all that's left now is to put some glass in the glass panel door a little finish on these, mount the hinges and hang them on the cabinet. Thanks for watching.